Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tuem and today I'm going to talk with Henka from the music band Children of Bodom. I'm very excited about this one because this is the favorite music band of mine since childhood. Not childhood, I could say uh, when I was a teenager because it was about uh, the year uh, 1998 that I got introduced to uh, this music band. Now I'm waiting for Henka to join the chat so that we can start our conversation together. Let me check who is in the room. Hi everyone, welcome. Yes, there he is. Let me invite him. Yes, I have Hey, Henka, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much. So how's everything going in Finland now? Um, it's, it's good. It's good? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the pandemic, the, the biggest lockdown is now, now over and we're expecting the summer to be almost normal. <clears throat> oh, that's good. And uh, uh, would you please, uh, by the way, tell us about yourself and the band because uh, the viewers that we have, uh, actually not all of them listen to metal music. For those who listen to metal music, of course, they know you very well because since 25 years of work with such uh, quality work, so they all you know you and many of them love you for sure. And many of the fans are already in the room, as I can see. So would you please briefly tell us about you and your band? Well, my name is Henk and uh, I played bass guitar in Children of Bodom since the beginning until the end. So from 94 until 19, so 20, exactly 25 years actually. <clears throat> so um, yeah, and we played melodic metal, uh, we did 10 albums, a few live albums, a few compilations and so on and toured all over the world also in Cyprus once. Um, yeah. And then we, then we decided to, to call it quits in 2019, and and uh, and yeah, no, no, here we are. <clears throat> and what was uh, also confusing for your fans uh, about the style of the band because it was not quite a melodic death metal. It was a combination like with uh, black metal or we could say power metal. So how would you describe it? You would describe it exactly as. Melodic death metal, because it seems that you had your own style, like bottom style. Well, when we started, we pretty much, in a way, put all the stuff that we liked about metal or hard music into our songs. And then it became <clears throat> what, what our first album sounds like, Something Wild. And that's why we actually, one of the reasons why we called it Something Wild, because it's, <clears throat> it's, it's a weird... It was a weird mixture of music styles. And we were very sure that, that there would, wouldn't be many people who would actually like this kind of combination of black metal vocals and Ingrid Malmsteen guitars and Scorpions riffs and, you know, and fast, fast drumming from, <clears throat> from certain death metal, <clears throat> death metal bands. But, but yeah, I guess eventually it became bottom sound, but of course it's, it's really hard hard question to say what, what kind of music in a way we, we like to call ourselves death metal because the the um, the imagery we, we talk about in the songs is kind of like related to to that genre of course the vocals the alex's screaming voice resembled a lot of a lot of to black metal <clears throat> that's why that's why black metal is very often often in in the <clears throat> in the talks and then, you know, some people, of course, we have power, power metal and speed metal elements and trash too. So it's, it's difficult. We, we just want to call it, we, we always just say that it's just metal and, and it's very melodic. So I think that was, yes. that, was, that was the easiest way to say it. But of course, you have to categorize it. So. Yes, and the uniqueness of your band, I think, was the reason also, at least one of the reasons that you have so many fans from around the world. So we really appreciate that. Uh, you know, since yesterday, I've been gathering questions from your fans. I received so many of them. I don't want to make it like a documentary starting from 
the beginning of the band to reach the end. So I'm going to worship the chaos, like one of the albums of yours. So I'm going to randomly go through them and casually we can talk about it if you agree. Yeah, sure. So most of your fans asked about uh, Alexi, obviously, and uh, of course everyone heard about the bad news and everyone got sad about uh, Alexi's passed away. So uh, how did you cope with that and how did it affect your band and the friends around Alexi? Um, well, we played our last show with Alexi in December 9, 2019. And ever since we, we, we talked pretty much like business talk only, we didn't, we didn't see in a, in, in a year actually. We did, we did something together, but, but um, some kind of like commercial um, uh, projects, but not, <clears throat> not nothing music related. So we were not really, at the last show, we were not in that, that uh, close contact with him. So, so I could only see him through the media, what he was doing with, <clears throat> with his new band. And um, of course I was, I was sensing that he's not, he's not doing, he's not feeling very well. But when I got the call from his manager, it was um, a few days before the, before the news came out. Of course, it was a big shock. Uh, I almost, I almost fainted. I remember that, you know, heart pounding. It, it was just, a, even though I know knew that he was not healthy, uh, it was still. When you hear the news, it is a surprise, and and uh, it took me a few days to realize it. And then those few, first few days was kind of like n numb feeling, and then then there was the grief. And then, then you started to actually cope with it, and then <clears throat> to think about that now maybe he's in a better place, and and uh, and uh, and so I think the biggest, and I think this same goes with with Jan and Jaska. They they had this similar kind of uh, process with this, but I think the hardest thing was was for his family. I'm I'm really really sorry for his mom and his father who who had this very as a, as a as a like total surprise and and um i think that's the saddest saddest part of this thing and also, and also his his sister who has to deal with um, with everything here in finland so we, having the grief and then to to do all the hassle with all the practical stuff it's uh, it must be it must be tough Yes, and I uh, observed that many of your fans uh, went through this uh, with you at the same time. So how did it feel that uh, many people around the world, your fans specifically, uh, were uh, have, uh, expressing their sympathy about it? How helpful was it? Well, it, it, was, it was great to see how, how um, big effect, effect he, he had on, on so many people. Of course, we knew that he's a he's an extraordinary man and and extra extraordinary talent and extraordinary charisma we knew that he touches a lot of people and like worldwide but it it was also very nice to see that that the amount of condolences came from every every part of the world and uh and also the, how the media took it a lot of big magazines uh, did a big, <clears throat> big, big issues about about his life and and his uh, achievements. So I think it was a great, great thing to see that he, how much he is appreciated as as he was as he was supposed to because he was a, he was such an extra, extraordinary musician and and talent. Yes, exactly, and uh, that's also what I felt that uh, all the fans tried to also cheer you guys up that. Yes, we are with you, and I hope that uh, they conveyed the message to you. And you said that yes, you recognize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, we get a lot of, lot of, lot of nice, nice comments and a lot of, um, how do you say, reassuring messages and, and just a lot of warm, warm vibes from from children of bottom fans all around the world. Yes, which, and uh, which is a very nice thing, of course. So let's go through happy moments. Like, uh, what uh, funny memories do you remember from Alexi when it just come to your mind? 
Well, there's many, of course. Um, well, well, for example, the, when, when he when he asked me to join the band, I think it was pretty it was pretty it was pretty random. But, well, we knew we knew from school each other, and then I knew that they had a band, and then after the school we went to this one cafe close to the school to to smoke cigarettes and drink coffee and then then he just randomly asked me like hey Hank do you do you want to join a good band and then of course I knew that he was talking about his band and I was like yeah, of course <laughs> but I remember the the exact moment because he was like I don't know if it really translates well but he said like you want to join a good band like and the emphasis was like on good <laughs> And uh, it was named differently, right? Inerted or something like that. Yeah, back in the day it was inerted, yeah. Yes, and uh, so you have been uh, friends with each other for a long time, I assume, since that time, because as you said, since high school. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was 94, so I was 14. And I knew them already like two years before, so since 92, probably, yeah. I see. And where, when was the time that you realized this is more than a hobby to you and this is getting serious? Um, well, I played football at the same time. And then I remember at around when I was 18, no, a little bit earlier, maybe 17. That's when I, when I quit football because there was not much, much, there was not enough time anymore for football because we were practicing a lot with the, with the band. So that was maybe one sign. But of course, it was still a hobby because it was not a job. Because in job you get paid, but with with children at the bottom, the fir f first years, many many years was was of course no no payment. Like you know, like like with any any uh, starting bands or at least many starting bands. So I think maybe around two thousand three. That's when we started the company for the band that's when it became like less of a hobby because then we had actually a, we had a company under under the band so so i think that's an easy easy point to to say when 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 it was no more a hobby it became more like a like a profession i would say i see and everyone are joining the chat they are saying hi to you yeah. around, uh, basically from around the world turkey, turkey mexico, mexico. Yes, many countries they already observed. That's, Russia, that's Greek. Brazil. Brazil. Thank you guys for joining. Russia. And I also try to uh, check all the comments here. So you guys, if you have any questions, I may add. Also, I'm trying to uh, ask Henka the questions I received since uh, yesterday. So uh, Henka, the other question that uh, usually your fans asked was related to uh, bottom after midnight. So you guys were separated in the last year as you mentioned and they want to know what was the reason well there was many reasons and we 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 put out a few statements back in the day in 2019 uh, trying to clarify stuff um, in a very diplomatic way and we are now of course now this now the time is a little bit sensitive because alex passed away but but now that the, now that there's this some weird rumors about what happened and stuff, we are we are planning to at some point to give a like more like clear clear message what 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 actually happened. But <clears throat> but but like we already stated stated officially on our Facebook that that um, the vibe in the band was not correct anymore. It, it became hard to work with each other, and and then. Then we all all decided together it's and it's going to be the end of the band so so that's that's pretty much it but but we will um we will come back to this uh officially so i, I don't want to now talk without without the other guys being here but but um yeah that that's 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 pretty much what it, what it was. I see. So your fans cannot expect, for example, new music from uh, Children of Bottom exactly with this title, right? So there will be alternative projects. Yeah. They're, it's very hard to imagine that, that there will be new music from Children of Bottom without Alex alive. 
exactly yes i heard the same uh from daniel that he said that then uh, they're not going to do that also for bottom after midnight so i think that's all of you have in common these days that you don't want to do that so yeah i don't i mean alexi alexi wrote 90 95 percent of of all the music for children but abroad so it would be really you know <laughs> difficult to say the least to do anything and 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 children bottom was was uh was our and alexis band so it's so making new music new music would would uh, would, would feel weird yes you are right and uh, what are you going to do personally uh, in the future is there is there something that you can share uh with public at the moment um uh, well me and Jaska have have new new musical projects and uh i think Janne has also something something cooking but i think that's not as as far as as my my and Jaska's projects but uh but uh, but yeah keep keep checking our our socials and then then you will you will find out more we so, try to, uh, we, we try to keep this uh, children bottom channel as only concentrating on children bottom stuff okay so if they want to know about your personal projects they should follow your personal accounts as i understand well, yeah, right th that's that's where you can at least find find information yes so yes. mostly now you try to make this channel like uh, memories of children bottom at this stage yeah we 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 like to keep now this children report on Facebook and feel children report on Instagram and Twitter as a, as a forum for the community that we can talk to people. People can talk to us, sharing the memories. If there's any news, we will share it here first. So it's, this is just concentrated on, on children report on legacy. I see. And uh, everyone, I think they agree that uh, the children of bottom legacy will live on and they are trying to also make it happen by contributing to your page uh, every day and i mm. see that uh, on your story you all the time share new things from your fans and that's wonderful yeah because we when we were active we had hard time keeping up with the social media of the band so now now when, when two years ago when we when we when we became inactive then uh, then we realized what is left of children at bottom that there's such a big fan base there's there's so much music there's so much things to you know take care of you, you cannot just leave it you know lying out there in the in the internet you have to really you have to really grab into it and then that's why when we started to to activate ourselves more and 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 I think it's really, really nice also now to because now we cannot meet the fans on the road anymore. So now at least we can we can talk talk to the fans here, here through the social medias. And do you think uh, are there going to be any special events to gather the fans together in the future after pandemic? Yes, we are planning on some things. Of course, now with the pandemic, it's hard to plan, but but it would be nice to. Do some somebody already suggested on was it on Facebook or somewhere that we should we should all gather at the lake bottom and you know grill and you know just chill out you know but but yeah some some sort of a gathering would be really really nice to do with with fans because because it it, it feels a little bit weird that that there is so many people that that we have met throughout the throughout the years on the road and. And now it's it's going to be super hard to you know to catch up anymore at least live so so let's see what we what we come up with and at least we did last week the instagram live here on clbhc instagram and we, we are planning to do a facebook live at some point and hopefully when the pandemic is over we could do something like like you said that we could invite people to certain places and then just you know have fun yeah, that would be great. Also, as I understood from the fans that they loved your last week live, uh, except for the seagulls noises. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, lots of them. Yeah, you don't really notice them when you are there, but maybe yeah, <laughs> from the from the speaker it sounds horrible. But but yeah, there were some seagulls and some dogs. 
and some random drunken people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, some uh, people that didn't, they didn't know your band very well, they asked about why Children of Bodom? What's the, why this name? Well, that's a good question. We, we wanted to have a, we had the first album out, but we had no name. And then we, we were at the, at the record label's office and we were thinking, okay, their album comes out, like let's say in four weeks, we need to come up with the name. And then, then one of the Spine Farm, uh, one of the guys who was working for Spine Farm, then he, then he just came with, a, I, th I think he came with a, was it the map or something? But somehow he came with, hey, you know this place called Bodom? And we're like, well, yeah, we know the lake, what, what about it? And yeah, there was, this, there was this murder happening back in the day. Okay, and then we started to dig into it. And then we started to think, hey, Bodom is actually, it's a weird, it's a weird word for even Finnish person because it's like Swedish, Swedish uh, word. But but we thought that maybe it's a bit weird. Maybe it's even weirder in English. And then we started to think of the combination for bottom, and, and then we ended up with children bottom. And then, then then everybody was asking like, okay, but then what, what when you are like old, <laughs> are you going to change your name to adults or or something? But but. Uh, Yeah, we didn't. So it sounded mysterious <laughs> for you. No, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's about it. That's, that's what happened. And, you know, of course, we are from Espo, and, this, and the lake is situated in the same city. So, in a way, it's, uh, it ties, ties our uh, roots also there. So it wasn't like yeah, one of you guys, for example, were born there in that uh, region? No. no. No, nobody was born in the region. But yeah, in the same city. I was born, well, actually, the hospital where I was born is probably like five kilometers from from the lake so so pretty close okay so that makes sense in that way then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i never thought about it but actually now that you said it yeah and by the way is that correct that you have master of science in social sciences uh yes i have master of master's degree in political history in social sciences yeah Uh, that's impressive. So have you done anything related to that uh, in your life or you were focused uh, on your music band? Uh, well, I did. Uh, I, I graduated while, while touring. I, I did my master's thesis actually in 2011. Uh, we were playing in Costa Rica with Megadeth and I, I remember I sent it on an off day in Costa Rica. I sent it to my professor. Like, oh, now it's done. Uh, But then I haven't done pretty much anything with it. I have done some teaching, like some substitute teaching. But uh, but no, no, officially not. I haven't done anything with my master's. Maybe, some, maybe one day I will. I don't know yet. I see. So there is a chance maybe in the future you consider it then. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? And I mean, of course, it's part of me. You know, it's part of my my um, my how, what's the word? It's part of it's part of it's part of what I what I, what I've become and what I know and of course it's <clears throat> if if I ever you know try to work somewhere of course it's it's part of, it's it's you can see it that I'm a master of uh, social sciences so of course then in a way it, it will always go with me and in a way it will always uh, be part of the decision of wh whoever I'm going to be dealing with so. In a way, I guess I'm sure I'm going to do something with it. But I see. But and by the way, guys, some of your questions, we already talked about it. And I will put the video for you guys so that uh, you can see it later. So for those questions, I won't say. But uh, if I will find new questions, for sure, I will ask from Henka. So keep the questions coming and I will sure check them out. And uh, Henka, by the way, uh, so you were the bass uh, guitarist of uh, Children of Bottom. So... Which one of the songs are your favorite in terms of bass guitar? Mm, uh, I was really happy with uh, with with Hex title track when uh, when we I suggested Alex that maybe in the end end of the song we could we could put this old um, fretless bass and I I wrote this small melodic part in it and and that. Could I play it with the fretless bass? And Alex was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's, let's do the fretless." And I'm like, "Okay, well," and then we did it. So I, I'm really happy that with with Hext, 
uh, well, it became the last album <clears throat> also, but, but that we finally did something a little bit weird with, with bass. So I think that was quite interesting. Sadly enough, we, didn't, we never played it live, but, uh, but when it comes to live songs, I think Are You Dead It is a lot of fun to play. Hate Through Death Roll is always be one of my favorites. Bottom Beach Terror, one of my favorites. That's, yeah. Yeah, I see. And uh, you were also back vocal of Children on Bottom. So what about that? Uh, which one was your favorite? And you were waiting, for example, this part comes so that you can <laughs> sing. Um, well, it was more about shouting and some, some like kind of like black metal-ish doubling of Alex's vocals. But there was six, six pounder. There was actually, uh, actually, you, you could have, there was actually a note that I, there was actually a melody that I'd follow. So that was always very challenging for me because it was also quite high high note so so uh, i would say six pounder because it was always a challenge for me to, to sing the 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 harmony with with alex's main main vocals yes your fans also agree with hex that the bass guitar there is awesome and uh, they also asked about your favorite place uh, in your tours that which place was the best and you have uh, lots of good memories from it well, that's impossible. That's, I, and I tend to always find nice things in every, every place. Uh, this is, that's an impossible, impossible question. I would, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I, 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 I love, there's, always, there's, there's good, good places, good things in every, every place. So it's hard to say. Of course, of course you have, maybe I have to point out the United States because it has so many different things in it in one country so so of course that's that's in a way easy easy to say because because within one tour you can be on the californian beach or you can be in the snowstorm in minneapolis or or you can be in the swamps in florida so not many countries have that at least <clears throat> but then again like like we are coming you are in cyprus i remember i remember the beautiful sunny day and the really good food we had there even though it was a short trip and which uh, city of cyprus were you we stayed in, uh, I forgot, it, it was, it, I think the show was in Nicosia, but, but I think we stayed in the kind of like, it was more like a resort kind of thing close by. Oh, I see. So but, uh, you were performing maybe in one of the resorts of a hotel? No, no, I think we played, we played actually in, in the city. Oh, okay. But, but we stayed, the hotel was on the beach. Yes, I think because yeah. none of them could handle the crowd, <laughs> so it needed yeah. to be an open air. No, it was it was a small club, but I I, I forget the name. We, somebody have to Google it, or maybe some of you guys online will remember. Yes, and do you know uh, when was it uh, approximately? It was around ten years ago, two thousand and. It's because I can't believe I missed that because uh, I was uh, I've been here since 2010. And it, might just, it might have been just before. Actually. Yes, it, it might be uh, before. Otherwise, uh, I wouldn't miss that. <laughs> Sophie says Pavilion Club. That's probably that's probably correct. Oh, I see. And uh, 2012, so, Sophie again. Really? So you missed it. Doctor. Yes. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> Where was I that time? <laughs> so, and you visited Russia, by the way, many times. Is it is it because uh, it is close to Finland? Uh, well, I, that's true. And but there's also there's a lot of lot of uh, really enthusiastic fans. But of course, it's also convenient for us to go there, and we had with really good booking agent slash tour manager called Konsta, who actually lives in Finland. He's a Russian. So we could always start from Helsinki with him, take the train to St. Petersburg or Moscow, and then, you know, start from there. So it's very, very easy and very convenient way to do it. So maybe that's one of the reasons. But, but I think the main reason is that because there's so many, so many crazy fans out there. And it's, it's also super nice to be in Russia. Also very nice and exotic places for us to, 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 to see. I tried to catch you a couple of times in St. Petersburg, unfortunately. Uh, I had problem getting visa on time. So 
twice I missed that chance and I couldn't believe that you were also in Cyprus. And Sophie mentioned about Pavilion. Uh, is it in Greek side or Northern side? Because maybe if it, is, uh, it was in Greek side, that was the reason. Because uh, as foreigners, we cannot just pass the borders from Northern to Southern. And yeah. I think that most probably was the reason. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not sure. Sophie knows. Uh, I see. So Sophie, let us know, please. <laughs> And um, guys, also, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know. I will share with Henka for sure. So I, I saw a few people asking if I do play any other instruments. Yeah, I, uh, I started with guitar, electric guitar. Well, I actually started with uh, like a classical guitar, but I switched to electric guitar quite fast. And then I got bass as my main instrument when I joined Children of Bottom. And how do yeah. you like electric guitar so far? Well, it's it's a little more difficult. <laughs> I haven't been playing much since since I changed bass to bass. I also played piano back in the day, and uh, we, I have a ukulele also now. And so I I, I, li I like to play with with acoustic guitar and and bass and ukulele the most. I I should also go back to learning piano. I see. And uh, I noticed that Children of Bottom didn't have that much collaboration with other bands, comparing to other bands when I look at it. Is that true? And why is that? You mean like uh, recording? Exactly, yes. Maybe well, your style didn't, uh, was not well, compatible with them. Well, I don't know. We, we thought that us five is just enough for, for making good albums. And also, Alex's songwriting was so strong that that the songs were complete in their early age, early stage, and there was no usually space for for collaboration. Of course, there could have been made some space, but but for some reason, we 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 always did, did the music just just as five. I see. And what about uh, female members in your band? How was it to work with them? Like Kimberly was there, for example, and one of your keyboard player, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we just talked about this yesterday. Erna, Erna was on one Erna, tour. Yes. Yeah, and then Kimberly was on one tour. But that was like, Jesus, I was like <laughs> late 90s. I don't even remember. But the, I don't know, not, nothing, nothing special. It was just in ordinary tours. Of course, they were not ordinary because they were one of the first tours we ever did. So we were just super excited about everything. But everything was fine. And, and I'm glad that we we managed to play those tours, even though Janne couldn't join. So I'm glad that Erna and Kim did, did the job. I see. And uh, people keep asking about your favorite band these days. That's always a tough one. Uh, I haven't been really listening to listening to much music now. <clears throat> now lately, well, one one long time favorite is Gojira, and I heard the new song, and I was really happy that it's a good song. And do you think the metal music is going to correct uh, direction comparing twenty years ago? Or you mean wrong direction? I mean, uh, does Sorry? it go to a good uh, direction, like somewhere uh, we could say it's improving? I don't know. I'm, my personality is always forward looking and I'm always, <clears throat> always more in, interested in, in, in the new music instead of like really digging into the old ones. So, so I would say yes, because I hear all the time good new metal music coming, like for, ex for example, just mentioned this Gorgira and, uh, I think there will always be good music and I think there will always be, will be good metal music. And Inda asked a very interesting question that uh, do you think Children of Bottom uh, changed the direction of uh, metal music in Finland? Mm, it's hard to say. I don't know. I, I, I think our musicianship, the... Uh, the, the amount that we practiced and how that showed maybe in live performance and also in, in on our records. I think that might have been um, something that changed a lot of young players' minds 
you know, to go back to practicing and, you know, the basic, the basic thing to practice, practice. So I think in that way, in that way, yes. Mm, but then, then I don't know. I think it's, it's somebody else who has to, has to say, say about that. It's, it's hard, it's hard for, for me to say that what, what did we change or did we change? So last week, uh, Chaos TV had an interview with Alexander, your former band member. And uh, he mentioned the reason he left uh, Children of Bottom was mostly pressure of managers. Like it was uh, going through different tours and it was, he felt like a robot just playing and didn't have that much passion. And I noticed again in Nightfish Music Band, Marco left the band for almost the same reason. So how did you guys survive under such pressure in touring? Mm, because playing live that music for the for the crowd is just the best thing to do and and especially well of course Alexander was also older than us maybe I don't know if that had to do with it but we were when Alexander left I was 23 and the other guys were 24 and he was he was 30 so maybe also there was a big, you know, maybe it was also also a critical age difference between us and him. Maybe he felt it more, you know, you know, uh, choking than than <clears throat> than we did. But uh, but but to me, like the manager side is it was a was of course a good thing because they it gave it gave the structure, it gave us it gave us the timeline, the future, it gave us deadlines, and of course gave a lot of opportunities to to tour with with bigger bands and, and, and so on. So, so, but I, I, I get, I get his point. And, and I remember the last tour we did the, the long hate to death Road tour in Europe and we, we could see that he was not happy anymore. So, so I think he did the right, right choice back in the day. And those guys who are saying that uh, they uh, actually were in your concerts uh, internationally in many places, I envy those guys. Unfortunately, I never had that pleasure, but you guys were my favorite band of all time. I all all the time mentioned that, but those guys, uh, I really envy you. That's great. Yeah. And, and by the way, uh, um, actually, I was talking with my parents that today I will talk with Henka from Children of Bottom, and surprisingly, they remember Children of Bottom because they usually listen to pop music, and they said we remember that because we remember Alex's screaming. <laughs> And they, they thought maybe I got crazy. They should uh, send me to maybe a psychologist or something when I yeah. was listening to that. Because those ages, usually people listen to, I don't know, NSYNC or Backstreet Boys. It was uh, that fever. Yeah. So, but what I wanted to say is that I really appreciate your music because uh, during that time as a teenager, I had uh, much dark thoughts, for example, in my mind. And I was thinking okay, it doesn't match the music that I'm listening these days. And your music was uh, about, for example, such it had such lyrics and the way Alexi uh, made those songs that I could totally relate it to that. And it really helped me to relieve those feelings. It was like Alexi was screaming for all of us. And uh, I really appreciate you guys for making those music and help us go through those uh, ages, you know, as teenagers, especially, I felt that, and I really owe it to you guys. Well, thanks. It's very nice, nice, very nice to hear. Of course, it's nice to hear from any you know dark times in your life, but it's nice to hear that that the music that we make and uh, and Alex's lyrics also that they they really resonate with with other people too. And and you are not the first one who says that, so I'm, I'm really glad that. Uh, but also the lyrical side, because for us, it was mostly about music, <clears throat> and Alexi was the one who doing the lyrics, and we we were not even sure what he was always dealing with. But but it's relieving to hear that that they they touch a lot of people. Yes, I'm sure I'm not the only one. There are lots of your fans, even in this room, they may agree to that that you guys inspired them. So how does it feel that you inspired so many people around the world in general? Well, of course, it feels good. <laughs> and it's, 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 it has been a great honor to be, to be able to, to do this and to be able to play this music around the world. I will, I will always be happy 
to to think back. Yes, uh, I'm enjoying talking with you so much. Uh, usually, I try to keep the interviews short so that we don't lose the video on Instagram. So let me go through the last questions. And uh, what I want to ask you is related to your concert. That when you when we watch your concert video, is uh, is go crazy. So <laughs> what do you think about the crowd, your crowd specifically? Because what we watch, especially. When you sing about, for example, I, I worship chaos, it is the total chaos in the crowd. <laughs> How do you describe your uh, fans during your concert? Well, I mean, they are just so big part of the whole show. They are like, uh, it's, it's such a, the synergy is so strong and the interaction. So it's just, you know, it's, it's a, it's it's as as important thing of the show as 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 the band was so i don't know i don't know how to say it. it's 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 the main thing that's that's why that's why we always went on stage and that's why we always did the thing to see you guys there in the crowd and and to see the smiley faces and the sweaty skin and and the moving hair and if there was a you know, circle pit or whatever, it's, that's the best feeling. And did you observe any funny moments uh, in the crowd? Like someone tries to just jump on the crowd and it fails, something like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the shows, yeah, when there was not so many people, for example, in the crowd, and then, you know, some, some people would try to jump off the fence on the, gr on the, on the crowd, and then, then they would have really hard time to, you know, keep the person up there, you know, without falling, <laughs> falling at the floor. And of course, sometimes you see that they fall and, and that's also scary. And also when people do crowd surfing from the back towards the stage, and then you see that they're coming to the end and then there's this big gap of nothing. And then you see that there's no security people to catch them. That's the, that's the scariest moment when, when I'm there and trying to play and then I see some let's say a small girl crowd surfing and you see that hold on in, in 30 seconds she's going to fall two meters to the ground and that's you know it, it was not it was not it was quite many times when i you know i lost my concentration i lost my you know i missed a few few notes when i was seeing what happened to these people who fall, who fall on the ground well luckily luckily at, as far as we know there was never <clears throat> never any major accidents but but yeah, the the intensity in the crowd was always the always the key thing. Yes, it uh, it's very hard to imagine what your security goes through during your concerts because that totally gets crazy. Uh, Henka, I really appreciate your time, and uh, I'm honored to have this conversation with you. Uh, would you like to add something? No, thanks. Thanks for having me, and 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 thanks for thanks for all the all the people who joined and and all the, all the children bottom fans and supporters and and let's let's talk here in, in our children bottom socials in the future let's see if we could also also meet up at some point so Enka, i wish you the best for this page to uh, actually continue this interesting uh, job and also i wish you the best each one of you in children of bottom the best in your uh, alternative projects thanks you too, Thank and have a have a good, um, hopefully, better summer than last summer. I hope so. At, at least pandemic-wise. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Thank you. So see you, Anka. Bye bye. Bye bye.